If we go out there in a group, we're slow, drawing attention. If I'm alone, I can move fast. I did. What'd you do before all this? Delivered pizzas? Why? Welcome back! We're now in the fifth video of our tutorial series, so I'll spare you all the introduction. If you're new here, check out the playlist to start from the beginning. If you're not, well, let's hop to it. As always, timestamps, the version number, and other details can be found in the video description. I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little off this time. I'm recovering from a recent illness and my throat is still kind of scratchy. Today, we're going to be looking at tactical movement. Movement is, in my opinion, the most important skill to master in Cataclysm, because movement beats everything else. If a monster's too strong, you can always run away. If you need to get somewhere but there are too many enemies, you can always figure out a way to path around them without getting nabbed. But it's not as simple as identifying point B and getting over there, as we'll see. We're going to leave our shelter with only the skills and equipment acquired in the previous videos, and we're going to explore a neighboring town. We'll be doing this in broad daylight without worrying about clearing the place out. I do want to stress before we begin that my gameplay style in this video is for demonstration purposes only. You want to learn to move like this so that you know how to get around when you have to, but you should generally be approaching towns carefully and methodically, at least until you get a deathmobile going. We're approaching from the east, and the first and most important thing you want to keep in mind at all times is that you need to have multiple exit plans. We're out here in an open field. This is terrible terrain. We have a stamina meter and the zombies don't. If we don't have anything to block their progress or break their line of sight, they will eventually catch up to us. So what we'll do is we'll approach this side of the house rather than going up the road. Houses offer lots of entry and exit points and they're great for breaking line of sight. This house even has an open window, which lets us peek inside before we enter and allows us to access the place without making a lot of noise. As we approach the house, we keep an eye on our compass, which tells us that we've broken line of sight with all of the zombies that we saw before. Now let's take a minute to assess our escape plan. We can get in or out via the window here, and we can access the roof by climbing this drain pipe. The south corner of the house is also close enough to duck around. As you play, you'll start to get a feel for how quick your character is compared to the zombies, and how close something has to be for you to consider it a viable exit. At this point, with a healthy survivor, I'm happy if I can break line of sight or go through a door or window within about 15 tiles. The windows on the north side of the house have their curtains closed, which means we won't be spotted by the zombies in the cul-de-sac when we enter. We got a good look into the house via the east side windows, and while we can't know that it's empty, it at least appears that we're not going to be wandering directly into danger by entering. The front door and this door here are locked. We can tell by their sprite. Locks on wooden doors are one way, which means we'll be able to quietly unlock the front door from the inside of the house if we choose. The other door is interesting, though. Doors like this frequently lead down into basements, and basements can be vital escape points. We'll have to take a look. Our first order of business is to make sure the coast is clear. If we found a zombie in here, we'd have to keep moving, but it looks like we're all alone, so we'll sneak around and close up the windows. Something's bound to wander in here sooner or later, but we can buy ourselves some time to look around. We've secured all the windows but the south. We haven't scouted down there, so before we step into the light, we'll press ourselves against the wall and crouch. Crouching blocks line of sight as long as you're up against a countertop, window frame, or other low obstacle, and is one of the primary stealth tools in the game. It's especially useful when dealing with robots, but here we can use it to shut the blinds without being seen. Now that that's taken care of, we'll smash up some furniture. I know, it's hardly stealthy, but we have a good idea that there aren't any enemies within 10 tiles, and we may actually be alone out to 17, which is how noisy putting our foot through this countertop is. If we wanted to be quieter, a lockpick or a crowbar would come in handy here, but we're feeling lazy. We'll pick up this plank and use it to beat down the door. Alas, it's only a bathroom. Bathrooms are often full of useful supplies, but we're really hoping for a basement. We'll take the time to rest here, because something might have hurt us and we may need to run. While we wait, we watch our message log on the screen to see if we hear any noises, but so far it's all quiet. Looks like nobody heard us. Next, we'll go out to the deck, unlocking the door by opening it. There could be monsters outside, but we're prepared with exit points here and here. The townhouse is locked up on the west side too, so we'll make our own door by punching a window with the S key. By doing this twice, we clear the broken glass out of the window frame to make sure we don't cut ourselves. Bedrooms are often great sources of early game armor. There's actually a sleeveless leather duster in this one, which as we've seen is pretty decent torso protection. We'll throw it on. 
For no particular reason, we decide to go through the other window. We probably could have just unlocked the bedroom door, but we're the kind of person who wears a sleeveless leather duster and no shirt. We are above such concerns. We've now made a full circuit of the townhouse. In a real playthrough, we might pack up as much loot as we could from this place and sneak back to our base with all the goodies, but for the sake of the video, we'll press on. We have our escape routes behind us, through the townhouse, so we can open up the front door without worrying too much about getting overwhelmed. We remember, though, that the east side is still locked up, so we take a second to close up the windows and unlock that door for good measure. Now we can traverse this place pretty easily and use its doors and windows as anti-zombie obstacles. Out front, we find a crawling zombie and a brainless zombie. Crawlers have a reduced vision radius and move very slowly, and brainless zombies only respond to sound. We can walk right past these two. This stone house also has an open window, but lacks curtains. We can't seal it up like the townhouse, but we can get in easily enough and unlock the door. We continue to poke around in search of a basement. We find a safe, which could have guns in it, but we lack the tools or proficiencies to get it open, so we'll leave it for now. We can see that this house is on the north edge of town, so it's unlikely we'll have zombies out that way. It looks like there's some loot in here, so we'll just go around and close... Uh-oh. We have a pile of dead zombies here. Sometimes this happens because there's some hazard they keep running into, like an open pit or a rose bush, but we don't see anything like that and there are just three on this one tile. The fat zombie can see us, but it's downed and injured, which probably means that it's fighting something that we can't see. While it's distracted, we'll quickly close the windows and move on. There's no telling what might be following us, so we'll use the capital G key to grab a few shelves and block up this door. This is easy for us because we have 10 strength. If you took less in character creation, you might not be able to do this. We get another look outside and see that the zombie and his friend didn't follow us. They're still out there, and they look like they're losing against whatever they're fighting. That sounds like great news, but chances are slim that whatever they're up against is a big fan of ours. On our way out the door, we spot a straw hat. These are actually useful if you don't have anything else to wear on your head. Bright sunlight can debuff your perception when outdoors, so having a hat can really help. We head west, minding the crawler, until we spot what the zombies are up against. Wasps. Wasps come in several varieties, but they're all obnoxiously lethal in the early game. The little ones are cat-sized and very hard to hit, while the big ones have serious armor and a deadly bite. The poison tanks your stats, and without good armor they'll quickly have you debuffed in terrible pain and bleeding very badly. Luckily, they're mostly just territorial. If you figure out where they live and stay away, you'll probably won't have any trouble. As we head west, we find that there are several dead on the sidewalk. We can actually see the queen wasp in our message log. This is not an ideal place to be standing. We use capital V to look around. Wasps can fly, and they can hover one Z level above, where you're liable to miss them if you aren't paying attention to your compass. Luckily, it looks like they're down south a ways. I won't say this is a great idea, but I'll never say no to an opportunity to smash. Making sure these zombies can't get back up will make our life easier later. This takes some time, so it's pretty dangerous, but all the monsters in the immediate area seem distracted. We also take a moment to loot the bodies. There's a ballistic vest here, a helmet, a flashlight, and some ammunition. Unfortunately, the holster's empty. Getting a gun here would have been huge. We'll leave it for now, but this is why you should always check. Soldiers and police tend to have the best loot, but even ordinary zombies can sometimes have guns on them. Here we enter our third house. Thanks to the wasps, we haven't really been discovered yet, but our luck can only hold for so long, so we need to keep moving. And look at that! This one has stairs up and down. We use the capital X key to peek down the stairs. There's no telling what's down here, and walking straight into a dark basement isn't the best idea. And here we see our suspicions were correct. There's a zombie here, and there's also a skittering plague. These monsters are cockroaches which have started to mutate and grow, much like the wasps outside. Giant insects and zombies don't get along, but they both hate us. It doesn't matter the outcome of the basement war, we are not prepared to fight the winner, so we're going to leave them to it. Luckily, enemies are extremely bad at traversing Z-levels. They can get up and down stairs, but they're terrible at pathing that way and generally won't follow us. This is why we're looking for a usable basement. If you can find a clear basement, you have a hidden and defensible fortress that you can operate out of, and it's almost always a safe place to run back to in an emergency. What you don't want to do is run into one blind, though. 
Then you can wind up getting caught between a basement full of hungry roaches and a mob of angry zeds upstairs. With that in mind, we'll crouch and head up the stairs. As we reach the top, we see why we wanted to crouch. There are windows up here. Luckily, it seems quiet enough, so we'll take a step back and see what's across the way. And there it is. The wasps have built a big paper hive on the second floor of the house next door. If the zombies hadn't led them all away, this would be a really dangerous place to stand. We got lucky. We wander around and loot the place, crouching to limit our visibility. I actually do kind of a bad job of it here, but I'm not too worried. And here we find a wasp. Wasps do not break windows, but they can still come in through the open ones. We could close this level up and rest here semi-safely, but we'll keep moving for now. We spot a zombie cop outside. We don't have a weapon to fight it with, so we'll just keep moving. Next, we need to figure out where to go. The most immediately useful place is this playground of the west. We can use the chain link fence to lose these nerds. Press E when adjacent to the fence for a climbing prompt. This can fail if you have low dexterity or you're badly hurt and you need your hands free. The zombies can't climb fences, so they'll have to bash it down to follow us, and by then we'll just break line of sight using this little gazebo thing. With all these obstacles between us and the danger, we can plot our next move. There could be all kinds of things inside, but we don't have the tools to get through these shutters. We'll make a note of it and keep moving. As we approach the south side of the building, we'll once again make a note of our escape options. We can't hop the fence here because these zombies we ditched have made it through, but we can climb this downspout if we need to. Worst case scenario, we run north and lose them in the woods. Now it gets interesting. We can see 21 zombies in and around this intersection. None of them have spotted us yet, but if we go this way, they're going to. We can walk faster than most of these, but there's at least one zombie dog. Zombie dogs are weak, but they're faster than a normal human walking speed. We'll need to keep that in mind. As we round the corner here, we discover that the hunting shop storefront has security stickers in the windows. There are bars over them, so we can't get through them by bashing, but we can break them to create a distraction. We press the S key and put our fist through the window. Immediately, an alarm goes off. This is loud, audible for 39 tiles in all directions, and it's sure to attract most of the intersection. Our plan now is to head northwest and let the zombies to the south cluster up here. This dog is catching up to us, but there's a car here. We can take advantage of the fact that zombies will usually path in straight lines and bait it into going through the open door. This will cost it several seconds, allowing us to get some distance. These other zombies fall into the same trap. Across the street, you can see something interesting. There are two grocery bots here. Grocery bots are little helper robots that are supposed to take your groceries out to the car for you. If you have money, you can actually hire them as pack animals, which is pretty fun. They're fast and quite durable, so they're actually a great zombie distraction. There's also this iBot. This is a camera drone that has showed up because we broke that window. Not only will it distract any nearby zombies, it will eventually summon police bots that will tend to get mobbed by zombies and hold their attention for a while. Just don't let them catch you. We have a grocery store here and a pharmacy here, which are both great for obvious reasons. We'll remember their location, but for now we'll dip out and let these guys sort each other out. Down south, there are some storage units. Great for playing storage wars, but we just don't have time. After surveying the block, we determine that our best escape is to the northwest. The robots here will distract some of the zombies, and we can lose the rest by climbing over this fence. There are quite a few of them now, so we should get moving. It takes two attempts, but we make it over, and in just a couple of steps we've broken line of sight. The zombies in the intersection will quickly forget about us as long as we keep moving. Once in a while, the game likes to remind you that you're not as cool as you think you are. 
We need to move. Now. Right away we see a few options. We could get up on the roof via the downspout, or we could go through that window. There's no telling what's inside, but it's got to be better than 11 dogs. There's another downspout here, and also the door. However, the glass around that door is easily broken, and since it's five tiles wide, it's not going to work as a choke point. We'll need to find another one inside the house if we go that way. First, I'll go to the debug panel in the options menu and turn Experimental 3D Field of Vision on. This is off by default. When it's enabled, you and the monsters can see up and down Z-levels. Personally, I think you should always have this on. It's too easy to cheese Z-levels without it. Because this is on, it's now a really bad idea to get up on the roof here. We'd be seen by everything on this block, and the shop would get surrounded quickly. So, we're going to run for this door. We get inside, close it behind us, and assess the house. There's a back window there, but you can't close windows from the outside, so we couldn't break line of sight that way. Instead, we're going to go through this southern door into the office. We run in and close it behind us, switching back to walking. The dogs will beat down the store in a few seconds, but if our stamina meter runs out, it's all over for us, so we're going to take it slow and steady. We could use these bookshelves to block up the door, but it's probably better here to just go out the window and break line of sight. We don't want to spend any longer than we have to in this terrible doghouse. We see at least 13 zombies out here, but no dogs. That gives us some time to walk around and check the place out. Now, there is a car here. At a glance, we can see that it has all the parts that it needs to run. Unfortunately, it also has a working security system. We don't have the skills to hotwire a car or the time to do it if we did, so we're going to leave it where it is. I would have been pretty sick driving off in that thing, though. We go east a bit, hoping to make an opening in the zombies so that we can juke around them and go west, across the street. But the dogs are too quick. Now that they're out here, we'll never make it across. But that's alright. While we were checking out the car, I spotted two escape routes, the downspouts. That's a big part of moving around. You have to set goals, but be ready to change them at a moment's notice. You never know what's going to show up. And just like that, we're up. All the zombies can see us up here, and they all came shambling over. See the red squares? That usually means there's an enemy in the tile below. The north side is no good anymore, so let's explore our options. Down on the south side, we can see some zeds coming over. We could hop down here and evade them. We're not in a huge hurry though, so let's look around. These two buildings are right up against each other and we can walk right over to the other roof. Neat! The south side is much quieter, but we can hear glass breaking below us. That probably means that there are more under us than we can see. We can try crouching around, but it doesn't stop zombies from seeing you from the ground. We can, however, use this air conditioner for cover. As you can see, it's a long run to the other side of the road, and the zombies are pretty much going to swarm us no matter where we drop down. So we head over to the pharmacy roof and smash one of the skylights. We can see there's a single zombie down inside, but we also hear a bunch of noise. It's probably not a good idea to drop down there, but the front of the shop here is secure. That means that anything inside wouldn't be able to chase us out if we climbed off the south side of the building. Before we do anything else, we grab this chain that's lying up here. These are fairly slow and inaccurate, but their damage is really good and we don't have anything else on us. We press E at the edge and choose to climb down. If you walk or jump off, you'll take a lot of damage and the pain will probably get you grabbed. It's also possible to accidentally slip and fall on these climbs, but since we have 10 dexterity and 0 pain, it's not really a concern for us. We hop down, stop crouching, and take a couple of steps. Some of the dogs got stuck in the shops, but there are still four of them that managed to catch up to us. We'll need to run. The house over there looks like a good place to lose these guys now that there aren't so many, but it's pretty far. So let's be careful. Our strategy is to run a couple of steps until we've got four or five tiles between us and the dogs, then switch to walking. This will conserve stamina. If we try to just sprint, we'd run out of breath and get mobbed. 
it's still going to be a close call. If we'd gotten to this car sooner, we could have tricked them into running inside and then closed them in there. Unfortunately, we're just a bit too slow, so we'll have to figure something else out. Looking at our stamina, we decide that it's too low to try running through the house. Instead, we'll climb the downspout. We barely make it to the roof in time. It's important that we get away from the edge, as zombies can sometimes reach up and grab you or smash the exterior wall. We'll move to the middle and pause to catch our breath. Meanwhile, zombies run around in the house below, looking for a way to get to us. We press the X key and the right angle bracket to look down at the ground level. This must be the back patio. The zombies are in the house somewhere, and there's another drain pipe to our left. We climb down a good distance from the windows, which will give us a few seconds head start once they figure out we're on the ground again. Boy, there's a lot of those. Wouldn't it be great if we could do something about them? We head over to this house, knowing they'll be right behind us. We could go to the drain pipe, but there's something in our pocket. Something we started with because we chose the survivor profession. A matchbook. This house has concrete walls, but we can light these window curtains on fire. We swing around the house, a devious plot forming. We use another match on the door. We need to be quick now. One of them catches up to us, but we have our chain, so we'll take it out. Next, we smash through this window and climb through. Cutting ourselves on the glass here is the first time we've taken any damage in this video. We escape into the garage where it's nice and dark, killing the one dog that follows us. We can hide out in here. We drop our chain and press the period key to put pressure on our glass cut. We keep doing this until it's staunched. It's a very minor injury, but this is a good habit to have. Eventually a few zombies wander in, but here in the dark it's child's play to get away from them. We go through this unlocked door. Behind the office, there are stairs up to the roof. This is great. We can chill out here as long as we want. We decide to wait for about 40 minutes until we start hearing some really loud crashing sounds. What is that? And there it is. The house is engulfed in flames. It's collapsing as it burns, making all kinds of noise, and the noise is attracting more zombies. Since they have no sense of self-preservation, they go in to investigate the sound and get all burned up. All we have to do is close the windows and leave them to it. We'll sit here at the desk, have some grape drink, and wait a couple hours. As you can see, it's already taken out a lot of them. It didn't get everybody, and it burned up all the loot too, but this will make our life a lot easier.
We head back inside and survey the storage room. There's a multi-tool in here, which is something every survivor should have, so we grab it. One thing to note is that zombies that are killed this way will turn into scorched zombies when they come back to life. Scorched zombies are pretty weak, not too much to worry about, but it is something to pay attention to. With that, we climb down the west side of the building and find ourselves alone. Reviewing the map, we can see that we crossed all the way through Farmington here, and our only injury was cutting ourselves on a broken window because we were too lazy to clean it up. We now know the lay of the land. We've wiped out a ton of the zombies here, we know where the loot's at, and we could have grabbed some along the way if we'd wanted. To get back home, all we need to do is go a ways away from the town, head north, and work our way back through the forest, where nothing will see us. Some consider the house burning strategy to be cheese. I go back and forth on it personally. If you feel it's a dishonorable tactic, you can avoid it. The end of this video would not have been all that much different without it. In a worst case scenario, we could have waited for a nightfall in the garage and sneaked out under the cover of darkness. I hope this was an informative adventure. I truly do believe that once you know how to gauge the speed of your enemies, preserve your stamina, and always keep at least one escape plan ready, you're ready for just about anything. So long, and see you next time!